Okay, let's open it up. Scott, uh, good event. Take us through the main event. Obviously, probably going to be a little controversy behind it, you know, going forward. Yeah, I mean, honestly, I, I uh, would not want to be a judge on tonight's fight. Uh, it was close, I think, going into that last round. And, you know, it's, uh, it's again, it's tough being a judge. And it, it was it was some the the 50 to 45. I don't know where that came from, but uh, I thought the other two were were close or on or you know it could have to me it could have went either way, but um, you know Stas is moving forward in our tournament fighting uh, Patchy Mix, which is going to be an unbelievable fight. And I think you saw what Mix is made of tonight. The guy is dangerous. He's long. He's lanky. Great submission game. He's going to be. A handful for anybody so we're gonna have a great finals i think a lot of people felt like, like um danny sabatello showed that he could be a handful for a lot of people too even though he didn't get the win so you know moving forward obviously he, he's not part of the tournament now but what kind of plans do you have for him what kind of future do you see for him in the division after this all gets sorted out next year yeah i mean i think that um let the let the finals happen and then uh and and then we're gonna you know start that division again and we're gonna try to get it the finals done as soon as we can in the first quarter, if it's possible. Uh, if not, you know, maybe sometime in uh, in April, May. But we'd like to do it as soon as possible, and then the winner will have to fight Sergio first. But we'll have all the other guys fighting, you know, underneath that, and Sabatello will definitely be in the mix. I mean, listen, the guy is good. He's really, he's really, really talented. I was impressed with his wrestling ability, and um, you know, he, uh, I think he controlled the ground. You know, and he did what he had to do on the ground. I just think that uh, what what the judges saw was a striking. Um, maybe it swayed them a little bit to uh, Stott side. But again, it was a great fight. It was close, and you know, it's it was Stott's night. I know you said uh, first quarter for for doing the finals. Just looking at what you, looking at what you guys have uh, in the states in the first quarter. I mean, would you potentially do that in uh, Los Angeles on the Fedor card, or would you? Wait for something else. I, th I think, you know, really what it is, is you, you've got to wait to see who's injured, who's not injured, and that's really going to determine when they fight. Because we we want them to be health, healthy, fresh, and ready to go, uh, and not just, you know, train through injuries and, and having to, you know, trying to cut way through, uh, you know, maybe too quick from this fight. But again, we're going to talk to all the management uh, on Monday, see how everybody's feeling, and then uh, we'll decide when we throw that fight, because... Uh, our goal is to get that fight done, uh, you know, in the first quarter if we can. Talk us through um, co-main event with Liz defending her title. Obviously, the first fight, uh, she got a, a win that was dominant at the end, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. she wasn't dominant leading up to that. And Juliana, you know, had some things to say about that fight being stopped to begin with. She was an even bigger favorite this time around in the rematch, even mm -hmm. though Liz won the first fight. But mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Liz looked phenomenal the way she got it done tonight. Yeah, Juliana is, uh, you know, a great fighter, and she, you know, went out there and tried her best. And even in Hawaii, you know, people were like, the only question was, you know, when she got stopped in Hawaii, there was like 12 seconds left. So the question was, if that 12 seconds would have continued, because she was stuck and she was taking damage. So would she have been able, to, would she be still been able to win, even if uh, they, you know, if they could let the fight continue and not stopped it? So it wasn't a matter of was she stuck or was she not stuck. She was stuck and she was taking damage. I mean, I saw the video. I watched it over and over. It's just the amount of time left. So really tonight, I think, was something that Liz felt she had to prove herself. And, man, she did it. I mean, to me, it's, that, that was a very impressive victory. And uh, Juliana Velasquez is, is, is a great fighter. So she, I think she put her will on her and just kept taking her down, pressing her and working her. And then eventually – you know, working that submission, which came to me, came out of nowhere. I mean, I was like, wow, that's really it impressed me. So, you know, to me, that's how I saw the fight. Liz is making a pitch now for you guys to open up a women's 135 division so she can move up there back to where she used to be. She would love to see uh, Alima move up there so that she wouldn't have any struggles making weight anymore and open up that division for you guys with the two of them fighting for a title. Is that something that's even remotely? in the ballpark for you guys has she had any conversations with you about that or is she just having a, a, a pipe dream and there's no, no, no. plan um, for 135 at women? i'll tell you uh we've had conversations not with her but internally with our fight team about um the possibility of opening up a 135 division so there's dialogue it's not guaranteed 
but there is dialogue and you know we haven't made a decision yet is there a reason why you guys haven't decided to go down that road prior to now you know i'll tell you when you think about you know bellator and how many how many tv dates there are and how many tv slots there are there's only so many slots so we we have nine divisions we felt really good about our nine divisions and uh, we felt we could be strong at 45 and, and 25 so that's those are the divisions that we went with but um you know we might open it up we'll see uh sky right here uh congratulations on uh i think a fantastic night uh the main event the backstory was a lot of trash talk especially from danny sabatello uh you know you got kind of two sides that you have the one side that loves the traditional martial arts of mma and they don't want that <clears throat> respect but then it's also promote his dream that he could sell a fight. So do you appreciate trash talk like that? You know, I, I'll tell you, I, I, I don't mind it, uh, but I love it when they can back it up too, right? So these guys out, went out there and started talking trash early on and, and built this promotion. And this is something that's very organic. This is not something we, we said, hey, we want you, a fighter to act this way or a fighter. It's just, that's just how it, it, it unfolded. And, these guys definitely had some beef, you know, before the fight. Hopefully now everything's good. They're all friends now and buddies. We'll see. I don't know. But, you know, um, you know, once in a while, the, a fight will start appearing and start building organically with, you know, the, the banter between the two fighters. So um, it's, you know, it's, it's something that's part of the game. And what drives me crazy is if, if you're going to talk, then you better be able to walk the talk, right? And these guys definitely did it tonight. Uh the last four guys in the Grand Prix all have wrestling backgrounds. So you kind of see the best of wrestling when you bring in wrestlers. But then we also sat, saw Pat Downey get knocked on the first round. You kind of have the bad part. Uh, does that e does either one of the things kind of make you want to bring more wrestlers in or maybe stay away from wrestlers? No, I'll tell you what. Um, to me, it's like wrestling is its own martial art. That's how I feel. Boxing is its own martial art. You know, jiu-jitsu is its own. And so to me, it really is who is the best, you know, fighter because styles – Make fights, that's true, but a certain style that works for you might not work for me, and vice versa. And so, to me, like Patrick Mix, he's primarily a jiu-jitsu uh, practitioner. But look at the level of expertise that he, you know, has obtained in that. So, a wrestler might think they're going to take this guy down, and then what? Then you're going to be in his wheelhouse and trying. So, there's going to be a lot of strategy on that fight that's going into the finals because, you know, that's that to me was originally one of the weaknesses of the wrestling was when they came in, they fought a lot of jujitsu guys and they didn't know how to deal with it. Right now they do. So I think a wrestler has to become a good jujitsu practitioner as well. And, and at least know how to defend it. And then so striking comes in, you know, this is the era of the modern fighter and the modern fighter can do it all. And, and, the, and that's really what we're looking for. But I will say that like you saw a lot of great wrestlers here. That's a great base to have, but you could also be a great jujitsu practitioner and you could have, a great band that could be your base but all i'm saying is the base has to expand in order to be successful in mma and fight at the highest level you better have a, a complete bag of tricks uh, i want to ask your thoughts one of the biggest stories right now in the world of mma probably one of the biggest stories of the year is uh what's going on with james kraus in glory mm -hmm. mma and all this and possible uh you know commissions are changing how you can gamble on fights uh the ufc has banned james kraus mm -hmm. from their events mm -hmm. um What's your thoughts on that? And what is Bellator doing to make sure that, you know, either fight fixing or fight you know, insider information is not getting out. So, uh, you know, it doesn't put a black eye on the sport. Yeah. I mean, that's to me totally unacceptable. And, you know, we have, to, everybody has to put their foot down. And I do know that um, uh, the legal department is taking a look at what's going on right now. And, you know, they'll come out with, you know, what they feel is maybe some changes that we might have to make, but that kind of behavior is just not acceptable because, uh, it could ruin a lot of good things, you know, for a lot of people that worked a, 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 a lot of years to get to a certain point. Um, but, uh, you know, it's, it's really, it's really just can't happen in this sport. It's just unacceptable. It, it looks like James Krause won't be cornering anymore. He might be selling his gym, but that said, if he wanted to corner a belt, so would you allow him right now? The thing about uh, cornering a fighter, um, you know, that's something you'd have to ask Mike Mazzulli. Is he going to, is he going to allow the guy to get a license because every corner man, every fighter, every referee, every judge, any official in this building has to be licensed by the state. So if the state licenses them, then I'd have to talk to the legal internally. But uh, I think these individuals are going to have a hard time getting licensed in different states uh, until the investigation is complete. Uh, another controversial person I want to ask you about is uh, Dylan Danis. He's fought for you a couple times. 
Sounds like now he's going to go to boxing. What's the relationship right now with Bellator and, and, and Mr. Danis? Well, you know, Dylan wants to go take this boxing fight. And I, I said, good luck. You know, it's, it's, you're going to have your hands full, young man. Is, and is, is he currently not part of the Bellator roster? No, he's now? still under contract. But, you know, we, uh, we, we've been trying to get him to fight for, you know, a long time. Uh, and he saw an opportunity here with uh, KSI. And so I wish him luck, and you know it was, it's a good deal for him. I don't want to hold that back and, and and be that promoter. So we said, yeah, go ahead. You guys can work it out, and and we're going to see what happens, you know, okay. in that fight. Sorry to interrupt. My my last question. We're getting close to 2023. Obviously, I'm sure you want that to be a really big year for your company. Uh, what's something new we might see, or something big that you're working on that we could see uh, next year? Hey, it's called CBS Prime Time, February 4th. Um, you know, we we've been we've merged together between the, the Viacom properties and the CBS properties, created a new company, Paramount, and um, it's been about two and a half years, and everything is aligned now to get the first date. So we're really excited about that, and um, we're going to put on a great card. And really, it comes to, for me, it comes down to the building blocks are in place now, and the foundation is set. The quality of fighters that we have here are unbelievable. We have the best roster we've ever put together. We have an amazing staff. We have an amazing production team. We have such a great, uh, you know, operation going. I feel like when we got the call, we said, okay, now, now is the time. And I believe timing is everything. And so to me, we're, you know, we're not going to say no. When CBS calls, we always say yes, but I believe the timing is right. And I think it's going to be a great night for us. And, and think about this, Fedor is going to retire, win or lose. And I think he's going to, he, he himself, you know, is on a mission to take it to Bader. So We'll see if he can do it or not. But Fader started his career on CBS fighting Brett Rogers back in Strike Force in uh, 2000 and what was it, nine or eight or nine? And what I mean by starting his career, I mean, he, he was fighting here already, but it was like a pay per view product and he fought in Japan. But really, what really made him popular in America, I believe, is those CBS shows that he did and the fighting, fighting for Strike Force. And, you know, he did, I think, almost six million viewers the first night he fought Brett Rogers on CBS. So, um, you know, to see him come full circle and now he's going to put the gloves down and that's going to be a really, really, uh, I think it's going to be an emotional moment for a lot of people because this guy's had such a long run uh, in, in mixed martial arts. To me, he's the greatest heavyweight of all time. He fought, you know, all these years, but he fought in the era where everybody fought everybody back then. And Japan had the best fighters in the world at that time. So, he wasn't ducking enemy. They were all there to frame the fight. So let's let's uh, you know let's send him off the right way. And the broadcast on CBS is a great way to have him test himself as, again with a fighter at the highest level, like a Ryan Bader. And 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 then you know we'll we'll send him off properly. Scott. So on the topic of boxing, tomorrow in uh, Nebraska, Chris Cyborg makes her boxing debut. Okay. Um. You flying out there? Uh, no, I, um, I'm not flying out there. She did call me and tell me she's going to fight. I wish her luck. Um, and I, th I believe this is going to be her second fight. Uh, she had a fight in Brazil a little mm -hmm. while ago, a, couple, a month ago, two months ago. And, and she's always said she wants to uh, try professional boxing. So she is fulfilling her dream. And uh, when she's ready to come back to MMA, then we'll have a conversation. Um, continuing on boxing for a second, I recently spoke with Steven Espinoza. And we talked about the topic of the back-to-back -back Bellator boxing nights here. Mm -hmm. And what Steven said was there's a lot of moving parts involved in doing something like that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And one of those moving parts is Scott Coker. So, Mr. Coker, I'm asking you, <laughs> what's your opinion about possibly doing those again? I mean, really, it's about timing. And, you know, when, when you talk about... Um, when the fighters are ready, are, is the date available? Is the next date available? Are, are the two dates back to back available on Showtime? There, there's just like he's like Stephen is right. There's a lot of moving parts. But if we can line it up with one of their fights and we could do a back to back, I think it'd be great. I mean, to me, uh, even you know, doing fights on the same night could be something that could happen in the future. That'd be that'd be a lot of fun. I think it'd be uh, something that, as a fan, I would love to see it because I'm I'm still a big boxing fan. Cool. Um, just to have curiosity, people always say this person was a star of the night. Mm. Is there anybody from tonight's card that 
you were kind of wanting to see a lot more out of? I mean, I think I think Liz showed us a lot tonight about her, you know, her grit and her will and and the will to win the way she she won. But I tell you, after watching Patrick Mix, Pat, Patrick, uh, uh, Patchy Mix, and watching Stotts, I'm excited for that fight, man. I am really excited for that fight. That's going to be a great main event uh, and the finals of our Bantamweight tournament. Give a champion a million dollars. They're going to have a lot to fight for. And, you know, I'm going to sit down and just watch it as a fan, and it's going to be amazing. So, to me, that that's, you know, not just one star. I think, you know, you got you got two stars here that are going to really throw it down on, at the finals. Now, you talked about signing free, you know, dealing with free agents. Have you spoken to any in particular that you'd want to mention? Um, we have been, we talk to everybody all the time regarding free agency. Inclu including Nate? I, I, I can't, I don't want to be specific. <laughs> okay. But, uh, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, you know, I'd rather not say at this point, but, um, you know, listen, there's not any free agents that a deal is imminent, but... We, we are constantly in dialogue with every free agent out there, um, you know, that's available to, to talk to. What's Thank up, you. Scott? Congratulations, last person, on yet another uh, great event. Uh, I don't know if you spoke to this yet. I know it just happened, it just resolved, but it, have you given any thought to maybe a month or a city where this Stotts Sabatello, or uh, Stotts mix uh, final will take place? I'll tell you, um, really it's gonna depend on when they're healthy to fight. And on Monday, we'll circle back with them because I'm sure, you know, they might be banged up. Um, and that's going to determine what month it goes, and that, then that will determine where the fight card is because, you know, we have several dates booked out already. And so February is already here. March is, you know, going to be right around the corner. We have some announcements coming up for the rest of the, you know, not the rest of the year, but, but the, you know, the first, definitely the first quarter coming up. So um, if they're ready to fight, I'd like to fight them as soon as possible. This is something that, that um, I, I don't want to rush it because if they're injured, I'll, I'll, we should let them rest. But if they're ready to go, we're going to be ready to go. So as soon as we can put that fight in the cage, we're going to do it. And of course, you guys have that uh, rising event at the end of the month. Mm. But then up next, Bellator 290, February 4th, the top three fights are on CBS, top three? Yeah, there's going to be three fights on CBS. So the one is Bader Fedor, the second one is Nemkov Romero, the third one hasn't been announced yet? That's correct. Mm -hmm. And then I just want to ask you about Last question, an intriguing bout that was announced for that card, Brennan Ward versus Saba Homasi. What led you guys, what prompted you guys to throw Brennan in there and give him a ranked opponent in Homasi? I mean, this is something that was part of the plan when we brought Brennan back. And we said, you know, we'll give you a couple of tune-up fights and then you got to start fighting the tough guys. And this is that, this is that time. So he will be on the card. Um, but the third slot hasn't been picked yet. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Uh, we've seen uh, Australians doing really well in MMA at the moment. Every major promotion either has a champion or has had one recently. Uh -huh. Have you put any thought at all into potentially going down under for a fight card? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, uh, we're in dialogue with a couple of companies right now to to go there, and um, whether it's in 23 or maybe 24. But uh, you know, we have a we have a great DVD deal with our parent, one of our home uh, networks there, and it's uh, Channel 10, I believe, in Australia. Uh, it's owned by um, Fairmount, so it's it's a great you know you know part of the family. But um, you know my understanding is the brand's growing and it's, it's getting more popular, and and eventually we'll go and and uh, when we go, you know we will be looking for a couple of fighters and you know and, and sign a couple of other people. I love going to different countries and going to different uh, cities and in different territories because you'll always find somebody you're like, oh, this guy or this girl could be really really good for us. So. Uh, and, and my and, and I'll tell you my history with Australia was um, I went there in 90 like 97 98 in kickboxing with some fighters and they are some tough fighters over there man they're really really tough uh, and so yeah would we go there would like to go there yes we go there to uh, to do a big fight yes and we'll go there to scout for some some talent at some point thank you thanks guys